I've been testing macro pads and shortcut devices for years, and all of this time I've been looking for the one. A device with all of the features that I need. And after years of searching, I realized it doesn't really exist. So I decided to do the next best thing and customize an existing macro pad with the goal of building a shortcut system that does everything I need. I wanted my shortcut system to help me. Yeah, that's just Louie. He kind of hangs out on my desk. Hey, Louie, what do you think of my new shortcut system? This is just a larger that created console. You just 3D printed a bunch of random stuff and called it new. No, no, no. I, I wasn't trying to say I made this. I, I was customizing. No, this was clickbait. You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't listen to him. There is value in my approach. By combining these different products and making some creative customizations, I should be able to create a shortcut system that does everything I need it to. Well, here goes nothing. So what am I looking for in a macro pad? Well, for me, it boils down to four things. First, inputs, and not just buttons. I want wheels and sliders, you know, cool stuff. Number two, software. I need software that can build multi-step shortcuts, not just keyboard shortcuts mapped to a fancy button. Third, aesthetics. If it's gonna be on my desk all the time, it's gotta look nice. Finally, music control. And yeah, this one's a bit weird, but I have this thing where I need a nice music controller on my desk at all times. So while the past version of me researches macro pads, the current version of me needs to tell you a story. I like macro pads because they help me get tasks done faster. But what do I do with all this free time that I'm saving? Well, lately I've been catching up on the news thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that delivers the stories that matter with none of the ads or distractions that usually come with my morning doom scroll. The newsletter is delivered to my inbox before I've even made my coffee. In about five minutes later, I actually understand what's happening in business and tech and have somehow enjoyed it. In a recent newsletter, Morning Brew covered how the iPhone 17 is outselling previous iPhones, which was a surprise to me. I really thought people weren't feeling the orange, but it turns out I'm just out of touch with regular people. So I highly recommend joining the over 4 million people who already read Morning Brew. It takes about 10 seconds to sign up. Just click the link below or scan the QR code on screen. It's the easiest way to start your day feeling a little more informed and a little less like you woke up inside the algorithm. Thanks again to Morning Brew and now back to the video. And after doing a ton of research, I finally decided on a macro pad to base this whole project around. And thanks to my boy Louie, you guys already know which device I went with. This is the MX Creative Console by Logitech, which came out last year, but it was kind of expensive, so I didn't pick one up. And in 2025, it's still pricey, but it was the only device that checked all of the boxes for me. And that's because it's actually two devices in one package, the dial pad and the creative pad. The dial pad has this big rotary knob, a scroll wheel, and four buttons. It runs on two AA batteries, which last forever, and overall, it feels great to use. The best part, though, is that the knob and all of these buttons automatically change their function depending on what app is open on your computer. So when I'm just chilling on my desktop, this knob controls the volume of my speakers, but if I open a video project, then it changes into a scroll wheel to help me navigate my timeline. The other half of the experience is of course the Creative Pad, which functions like an Elgato Stream Deck with nine screen-based buttons, but it also has these two extra buttons at the bottom for navigating between pages of shortcuts, which I really like. Unlike the Dial Pad, the Creative Pad is not wireless. It stays plugged in at all times, which limits your options on where you can place it on your desk. During testing, I put the Creative Pad up on this desk shelf so it could reach my computer, and I kept the Dial Pad near my keyboard. It works Worked, but it wasn't perfect. Now we move on to the software. To create shortcuts, we have to use Logi Options Plus, which is powerful, but also very unstable. You can build powerful multi-step shortcuts for any application on your computer. And for my macro nerds out there, yes, you can even add delays in between steps in your custom macros. But on the other hand, this software also crashes if you look at it the wrong way. Oh, you wanna change the color of your icons? How about a nice crash to desktop instead? Now, to be fair to Logitech, I did upgrade to Mac OS Tahoe in the middle of this project, which was a huge mistake. But still, this device is expensive and the software shouldn't feel this fragile. But even with all of my complaining, I still think the Creative Console is the perfect device for this project. 
It gives me all of the physical controls I'm looking for, and it has powerful software when it doesn't crash. But the layout, not my favorite. I get why the creative pad has to be plugged in all the time, it does have a full color screen, but I don't want my shortcuts to be in two different locations on my desk. So the plan is to upgrade the creative console by combining both halves into one custom enclosure. Oh, and remember my weird thing about music control? Well, the Creative Console technically has controls for music, but I think I could do a lot better. Step one, I need to bring both halves of the Creative Console a little closer together. First, I tried designing my own solution, but then I came across this perfect design on Etsy by a creator called CMKSTU. So I paid for the files and 3D printed it myself, and it turned out great. And if you wanna do something like this, but don't own a 3D printer, you can purchase an enclosure closure like this directly on Etsy. Speaking of 3D printing, I haven't shown you guys my new printer. This is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which has basically become my idea to physical object machine in my office. It's also super affordable, so if you want to learn more about this 3D printer, I'll put a link in the description below. I wanted my new creative console to have that beige 90s tech vibe to match the keyboard and warm tones of my desk. After printing the enclosure, I added these matching faceplates and suddenly the whole thing felt like one cohesive unit. The silver wheel on the dial pad did look a little out of place though, so I printed this black wheel cap, and now the Creative Console looks like a piece of 90s stereo equipment, which is strange, but exactly what I was going for. However, my little retro stereo is missing something big, music control. I thought about adding a tiny screen to the enclosure, but those are clunky and most apps don't scale correctly. And then I realized the best display was already sitting on my desk, my phone. I went through a ridiculous amount of designs for something so simple, but the height and angle of the screen needed to be perfect. And eventually I came up with this low rise stand, which holds an Apple MagSafe charger. Now I can place my phone on the stand, which triggers the always on display. Now my shortcut system has a clock, calendar, to-do lists, and most importantly, music control with album artwork. This is accomplished using Spotify's Connect protocol, which gives me album artwork and playback controls even though the music is playing on my desktop. The phone is just a remote control. And I know the concept is simple, but I like how the creative console and the always on display of the iPhone combine to give me all of the things I want at my fingertips. So that's the shortcut system. I took a macro pad, made some modifications, added a phone charger to it, but how have I actually been using this thing and was it worth the price? While I was working on this video you're currently watching, I used the Creative Console for every step of the video making process. I wrote the script for this video in Notion, so I created these text formatting shortcuts to speed up my writing process. Then I recorded the voiceover in Adobe Audition and created these multi-step macros to apply noise reduction, audio balancing, and cleanup effects for my voice recordings. And during the video editing process, the dial pad was great, allowing me to scrub through the timeline, while the creative pad was used for instant access to some of my most used effects and tools. But I also tried to be a bit more creative with my shortcuts. I've been using ChatGPT's advanced voice mode as a sort of brainstorming tool, and I wanted to create a shortcut for this. The shortcut needs to launch ChatGPT, begin a voice mode conversation, and pause any other music or audio coming from the computer so the AI can hear my question. And with the Logitech software, this multi-step macro was pretty easy to set up. And before you guys make fun of me for talking to an AI, remember my buddy Louie is right there. He's listening, and that would hurt his artificial feelings. Hey, dude, what are you? Okay, there goes the clock. But now the final question, was it all worth it? Well, my shortcuts have been really useful, and I'm happy with this custom enclosure, which integrates the phone charger and makes the experience even better. But there's that price. I know everything's expensive these days, but if you ask me, I think Logitech should break this bundle up and sell the dial pad and creative pad separately to give people options on how much they wanna spend on something like this, but that's just me. Overall, I'm really happy with how my custom shortcut console turned out. And even if you never use anything like this yourself, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, my name is Nick Moe, the channel is Work From Hype, and I will catch you guys in the next one.